People are always looking for the affordable wedding videographer. And this causes a bit of an unfriendly disconnect between couples and videographers, which isn't cool beans. We don't want that. So let's talk about it. What videographers need to understand is even though it is your 275th wedding, it is usually the couple's first. What they're asking of you isn't meant to be insulting. It's a niche profession. It's done by such small companies and independent artists. A lot of people just have a really vague understanding about what it is. And wedding videos have changed in the last 10 years or so in a way that wedding photography has not. Like, my parents got married in the gymnasium of a special ed school. Creative budgeting for the win. And my mom's cousin just walked around with a camcorder. Five months later, when I came into the world, I was delighted to have been able to see that day. But back then it was just footage and an excuse for my grandmother to show off her panties. Nobody was trying to make anybody look like a movie star in their own artsy rom-com. In the last decade or so, technology has improved in such a way that has made wedding videography a real art for people who fancy themselves as cinema. I mean, prices do vary, but you get what you pay for. The first wedding video that I ever did was free, so they got a free wedding video. I'm playing, it was gorgeous, obviously, I'm a genius. But in a world where you could have a distant nephew shoot it in 4K on an iPhone, or have a lot of people shoot video and then sync and splice all of that footage, which is actually a really interesting idea. Videographers get a little bit grumpy when you unknowingly disrespect the profession by lowballing them. What with how much work goes into it. Weddings are so much, so oh, yeah, much work. Sure. And then people don't realize how much editing you do after. The way weddings are planned, if you're asking somebody to block off a day 14 months in advance, you post an investment. And when you put down a wedding deposit, what you are paying for is the day, the day that we will block off from that moment forth, from anyone who dares try and book us. With making a wedding video that a lot of costs to cover, there's the equipment, there's cameras, stabilizers, drones, microphones, there's the post-production equipment, uh, computers, hard drives, editing software. Venues require liability insurance, and even some outdoor parks require shooting licenses, or we have to pay fines, or we get kicked out, or we have to play stupid. When we get caught, here's footage of me getting in trouble trouble making an engagement video in the Garden of the Gods. I'm just over here like, oh, what, what? Oh. Don't mind me, officer, I'm just a silly girl. Joke's on him, I got the shot though. And wedding video production is a lot more labor intensive than people think. And there's the editing, which takes, and I'm not exaggerating, an eternity. We have to hire assistant editors so that you're not waiting years for your footage. Coverage, which is non-stop to catch every fleeting moment, every organic little detail. There's the sound, which nobody thinks about, uh, but is actually the trickiest to pull off. And then because you don't want your video to be muted or taken down, and we don't want to get sued, a music licensing is another expense that your videographer covers. But no matter what, if you get a friend to do it or you hire a professional, you are going to want that footage. So make sure that you get it somehow. Mm -hmm.